Hey YouTubers and RV fans, I just wanted to spend some time today talking a little bit about my RV story. You know, it's interesting, when you have an amazing amount of growth on your channel, a lot of times new subscribers don't necessarily go back and watch all of your original videos. So I kind of want to give a little bit of a, of a my story so that um, my newer subscribers are able to kind of get a feel for what Paddy Wagon Travels is all about and the evolution of this channel. For those of you who have been with me for a while, sit back and enjoy. This should be an interesting, nostalgic time because I'm going to have some of my older music on. Uh, I'm going to have some clips that are going to be focused on some of the things that I did early on, such as uh, buying the RV and, and then fixing the RV and when I took off and where I went and the, the time I spent in Alabama as well as the time I spent back in Florida transferring the RV out and trading Myrtle in. So sit back and enjoy the video. Okay guys, so why did I decide to get involved in the RV life? You know, that's a question a lot of people ask me. And the reality of it is, is I was stuck in the grind of doing what everybody else expected me to do. Working every day so I could make a house payment, so I could pay for my car, so I could pay for my credit card, I could pay for my student loans, pay for everything. So, you know, but what you're doing is you're basically not getting ahead. You're not going anywhere, you're not doing anything. You spend your whole life in an office. In my case, I spent my whole life teaching, which I absolutely love doing. But at the end of the day, I had no energy left because I had given all of my energy out throughout the day. So in the evening, I would come home and I would not do anything. My kids were all grown up. I had sold the house. I was renting a, a house and I had moved to Florida. And from that point, I was basically doing nothing. I had a limited number of friends because I don't really have a lot of friends. The friends I have are people that I really value, but I was doing very little on the weekends. In fact, I found myself sitting on the couch watching the Food Network. Yeah, that wasn't any kind of life. And I remember one day calling my brother and saying, something's gotta change. I can't do this anymore. This is not fulfilling. You know, I'm 50 years old. What is the next stage of my life? I didn't know what the next stage of my life was. I was confused. I had no idea. I knew what my role was earlier because I had kids to raise. I had to go to work. I had to support them. I had to go to PTA meetings. I had to go to baseball um, practice. I had to go to football practice. I had to go to all, th all kinds of things. I was the caravan for the kids. Everything in my life revolved around my kids. They were my world and they continued to be my world. But when they grew up and moved away, I was kind of like empty. Not empty nester. I wasn't an empty nester, trust me. I was glad they were out. I missed them, but I was glad they were doing their own thing. Because I wanted to do my own thing, but I had no clue what that was. I revisited a period of my life where I wanted to do some travel nursing. And um, I wasn't able to do it, but one of the things that I remembered was that I was going to buy an RV and I was going to take off and travel nurse. And so one day I decided to get on YouTube and just take a look and see what was out there in terms of traveling and RV life and those types of things. And I was so surprised when I found so many different channels that had people who were living full time in their RVs. I didn't even know what to think about it. I was like, this is unbelievable. And all of a sudden I found myself watching hours and hours of videos from YouTube on RV life. Okay, so fast forward to, to, to um, two years ago. Actually, it was a little more than two years ago. Fast forward to October of 2015. It was at that point that I had finally purchased an RV. So let me show you that video. Okay, so I wanna let you know what happened. Um, I got a call today from the dealer, so I'm gonna go pick up the RV tomorrow, and I'm really pretty excited about it. Oh, nice pretty little leak there. So when I start the engine up, what happens is this fluid comes out. Myrtle's uh, going in for service. What I did the night before is I had turned the battery packs off. So, you know, I thought, well, I'm gonna start the rig, I'm gonna all this power steering fluid's gonna come out. And I'm just a freaking mess here. You know, now I got power steering fluid falling out of the front of the rig. I got a leak underneath the bed. I got a generator that won't start. And I start to think to myself, self, 
Is this really a good idea? I had to say when I bought that video that they saw me coming. I had no experience. I had nothing. I had my dad with me who was a mechanic and really understood the mechanics of the RV, but these people saw me coming. I had spent probably a good four or five months looking for an RV, and I know that's not a, lot, a long time, but I had spent some time before that as well looking. So I came across this Class A RV, uh, Winnebago Sightseer, that was a 2003, and the price was right, and I thought, what the heck? So my dad said it was mechanically sound, and so I bought it. And I brought the RV home, and within the first 24 hours, I noticed there was a huge leak out of the front of it. Come to find out it was the oil condenser. Um, so I guess it's a compressor unit for the air conditioner. And it also worked to keep the oil cool, I guess. I still never really understood what it was, but I know how much it cost. It cost $1,800 to get it fixed. Moving on to the next thing, I was bringing the RV back home from, from the service shop, and then I was um, stopped at a stoplight, and I was, went to go, and the whole RV just conked out on me. In the middle of this three-lane road, full of traffic in Punta Gorda, Florida, and I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna get this huge RV off the road and into this bank parking lot so I can call the so I can call the service shop and say get the hell out here and get this thing back to the shop. So come to find out when we got it back to the shop that it was the fuel pump. Another $1800. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm never going to get into this RV life full time because every time I save money, I have to spend it. So I told Pops and said, I'm never going to be able to get into our RV life full time because every time I turn around, it's a $2000 bill for this damn RV. All right, so my dad and I decide that we're gonna go ahead and start doing some mechanical work on the RV ourselves. We decided to check the back brakes because the back brakes were part of the dealership arrangement where they were supposed to replace the back brakes. And I had no confidence that they had replaced them. So my dad and I pulled the brakes off. So here's a clip of, of that. That was interesting. So Pops and I just uh, took off the dualies. We realigned the valve stems here and we had an opportunity to look at the disc brakes and they're beautiful. Perfectly clean, nice and thick pads, uh, no, new rotor, no ridges. These are some nice new brakes. Thick. Nice and thick. Beautiful. So these tires, these brakes are good shape, huh Pops? Brand new. Brand new. Anyway, there were so many days and times in the beginning filled with getting the RV ready to go. The problem is, is that I never any, had any confidence in the brakes. I never, I never had any confidence in being able to stop the RV. And that was a bit scary. So, and the other thing that I didn't do, which I should have done, is I didn't spend a lot of drive time behind the wheel of that RV. By the time I left full time in 2016, in the beginning of 2016, I literally had maybe 200 to 250 miles of drive time with that RV. So. There wasn't a whole lot of drive time. But here's some pictures of, or some video of when I started downsizing. I downsized my entire house and got rid of everything. And for those of you who've downsized before, you surely know how tough that is. Now I had a three bedroom, 2,400 square foot house that was full of stuff. It was full of stuff from my kids. It was full of stuff from you know years and years of stuff that I had been carrying around with me. Stuff that I never needed to carry around. So take a look take a look at that crazy video here we go hey pops I can't talk right now I'm working what are we doing pops are we downsizing Downsize. what are we doing Al Downsize. see I had to move the rig from the driveway sitting over here my life okay when we talk about downsizing to um, move into an RV it depends on how serious you really are but for me I guess I'm pretty damn serious because here is almost my life. I didn't have a lot of stuff, enough to fill up a trailer, but it's all packed up and it's headed away from me. It's all headed away. Special thanks to my dad, Pops, and his friend Patrick, and of course my son Alex. So everything is almost done and uh, it's getting realer every day every day that I downsize every day that I take the steps to move into the rig and to um, realize my dream of you know being able to travel 
every step I take, I get closer to that dream. So, this is scary stuff, but you know what? It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, seeing all my worldly possessions uh, here all packed up. And, uh, you know, hey. Okay, it. so I move into the RV after downsizing, and it was amazing. I lived in the RV for about two months in the driveway um, before I actually went full time. But my son Alex and I were out and about, and we were going to um, go to uh, just take it on a, on a ride to dump the tanks. And he said, I smell something electrical. And I said, I smell something electrical too. So I get to the RV park, and I'm dumping the tanks. And I noticed that the smell was pretty strong on the driver's side. Now here's the one thing I learned is when you feel or smell something that's out of the unusual or out of the usual, don't just let it go out of your mind. As an RVer, pay attention. <laughs> Come to find out I had a seized caliber on the, uh, the driver's front wheel and that it, the caliber had the caliber had seized so badly that it almost started a fire and <laughs> I can't believe I'm sharing all this of course it's in the videos but I'm I'm kind of having this nostalgic um, memory at this point so take a look at that video Myrtle is not here because Myrtle is getting breaks and today is Friday I took Myrtle in bright and early on Monday morning and this is how long it has taken for us to get the breaks done Anyway, I'm going to take you in the house and I'm going to show you what it's like to be in transition. So this is my house in transition. There's nothing here. It's empty. I have a cot set up in the bedroom um, that's preventing me from having to sleep on the floor. And I was able to take some pillows out of the rig, my toothbrush, and I had some clothes that I quick threw into a bag. Okay, so for those of you who've moved into your RV and you already live in it, you understand that when you have a mechanical issue and the RV has to go into the shop, it's not pretty because you either have to rent a hotel room or you have to have a nice service shop that's going to let you stay in the driveway. Well, at the time of the C's caliber, what happened is I needed to have all the brakes replaced in the front. So again, a part of the dealership arrangement was that the brakes across the RV were replaced. Clearly they only replaced the back brakes. They did not replace the front brakes because when I took off the front brakes, they were a mess. Totally needed to be replaced. Another $2,300. Now, here's the interesting thing. Because I have a workhorse and an Allison combination, all my brake uh, parts needed to come from workhorse. That included brake lines, that included the calipers. I was able to get the rotors locally, but I had to buy the brake lines and the calipers from workhorse which were hugely expensive so I couldn't stay in the RV so what I had to do is I stayed in the house while the RV was being worked on and now remember I had moved into the RV I had nothing in the house I had no bed no pillows no nothing so I ended up sleeping on the floor for two or maybe three nights you know in preparation for this video I did a lot of work on getting uh, videos clipped um, and man this brought back so many memories and reminds me of how far I've come as an RVer. So never, never lose the hope, never lose the fear that you will gain that experience because today I consider myself an experienced RVer. Um, back in those days, not so much. All right, so the brakes are fixed. I was telling my brother, I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go full time because I don't have enough money in the bank. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. And he said to me, he said, listen, he said, put money out of your mind. And he said, just do it. How many times have I seen videos where people said, what are you waiting for? Just do it. It's funny because I had December 19th as a departure date. Then I had December 28th as a departure date. And it's so funny because today I remember that I was literally procrastinating because I was afraid. I was afraid to go. I was excited, hugely excited. But I was afraid to go. On the day I finally left, I remember taking a video saying the paddy wagon launches. And I showed you this video of the house completely empty. And I have to tell you, the feeling at that moment was absolute terror. 
I knew the minute I closed that garage door that I was 100% committed to RV life. There was no backing out. There was no way I was not going to do it. And boom, I launched. That video was an amazing video for me because what it did is it confirmed my own inner strength and my own courage to really make some huge changes. Hey YouTubers and RV fans. So this kind of reminds me of when the RV left his apartment and uh, he said, I'm really doing this. And so same is true here. It's empty, it's clean and uh, I'm getting ready to hit the road. So, kind of weird, kind of weird feeling because my whole life I've had a house and now my house is on wheels. So it's, uh, it's different. I think you have to get used to it, but I'm just as excited as nervous. I'm probably more excited than nervous at this point. Um, we've gone through a lot of months of preparation together. So I'm pretty, it's pretty surreal actually. So. All right, I'll see you on the road. I've launched. Um, this is the paddy wagon, man. We're full timers now. When I closed that garage door in the house, it was done. So I'm on the road. Um, I've got a whole bunch of emotions. Uh, lots of them. You know, I guess I don't even really know where to start. My subscribers on YouTube are really my support system, along with my family, of course. But I really have grown. I've really grown to depend on you guys um, a great deal. And so it's actually very nice. I feel like you're all coming along with me. In fact, I feel like I've got 669 subscribers all hanging out with me today. And on that day, I drove from Port Charlotte, Florida, all the way to Lake City, Florida going through all kinds of crazy traffic in Sarasota, crazy traffic in Tampa, uh, all the way, I get, I get lost in Ocala. Here I am, you know, again, with a, a 26 foot RV, so it wasn't that big, but to me it was like a, an 18 wheeler. And here I am on these little roads in Ocala, in this college town, or around this college town, or Gainesville, I guess it was, trying to figure out how to get back to I-75, because I had gotten off to get gas. Gas, oh! gas that's later on in the video but gas has been my biggest albatross anyway i made it to lake um lake city florida and i pulled into an rv park called the in and out rv park and i thought to myself you know what you deserve an rv park with full hookups little did i know that i would become a full hookup guy because i was all about i'm gonna boondock and i'm gonna do all these you know things but i pulled into the in and out rv park in lake, <laughs> in lake city florida and I hooked up and I was like, oh, I can't believe I can actually relax. Okay, so I get up in the morning in Lake City, Florida, where I'm at the In-N-Out RV park, and I take off. No issues, except for the one thing, getting gas. I go in to get gas and I think, oh, this is gonna be easy. I'm gonna pull right in and pull right out. N no, it was not easy. I pulled in and then I got backed up from somebody behind me, and then I got jacked up from somebody in front of me, and nobody would move. So I thought, I'm pretty big. You know, I'm a big RV. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go. And I started to drive and a miracle happened. People saw this big RV coming at them and they moved the hell out of the way. That was a first lesson learned. I learned that people will move. Okay, so I leave Lake City, Florida and I head to Chipley in um, to a state park which is called the falling water state park and that was beautiful beautiful state park to stay in but here's some video of the falling water state park that was a nice stay okay good morning everybody thought i'd give you a look at what the campsite looks like out here in chipley florida beautiful sunrise this morning absolutely gorgeous it's a beautiful campsite it's pretty full a lot of people here. Tents. Very nice. People are very friendly. Lots of wooded area. Very nice. This is my little spot here. 
I'm only here for one night. Can't beat the price, $18. So I'm certainly not complaining. So I had the opportunity to visit with my son, Scott, who was living in Florida at the time in Chipley. So we spent the, we spent the evening, you know, hanging out. And then I went back to the RV. And on that night, I recorded, the, not recorded, but I, I hosted the Nomadic Fanatic podcast, which was, I think, either the first or the second time I hosted. And I think that was the one with um, Old Fart, New Start, Shelly. Um, which that video is still up on the Nomadic Fanatic podcast. If you want to go back to YouTube and take a look, um, that, vid that video is still up. And that video I did actually from the Falling Waters State Park. Okay, fast forward. I'm moving along. I get a hold of RV Debs because I'm going to be meeting up with RV Debs at the Hilltop RV Park in um, Robertsdale, Alabama. She said, the minute you get over the Florida border, she said, we're the next exit the Wilcox exit. I'll never forget Wilcox Road because I was so relieved to actually be to that stage of my RV journeys. So here's a video of me actually arriving at the park. Every Debs and I are gonna head out to the store. Look at you, you look beautiful today. Ah, go along with you. Now stop it. How are you? <laughs> on camera. You, you what? It's weird being on someone else's I know. The other side. At this part of the video, I have to tell you, I hope you've been enjoying the sunset. I'm about to lose light because the sun is actually setting over the mountain, but it is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful sight. Um, I'm out here tonight with um, Dawn and Mike. Dawn is doing her photography and Mike is doing drone shots. So it's been very nice out here on Quartzsite to get out past Plumosa and um, spend some time out here looking at this beautiful sunset and um, spending time with some good friends. So part two of this video is coming up on my RV story and we're gonna talk more about my time in Alabama and then what happened when I actually decided to trade Myrtle in. So stay tuned for part two, the next cliffhanger for Paddy Wagon Travels. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. For my new subscribers, yay! I'm glad that you're here. For my older subscribers, you're the base, you're the support, and I thank you so much for being a part of my RV life. Thumbs up if you liked the video, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, there's lots of exciting videos coming up this year, and I hope you come along for the adventure. All right, guys, have a great evening. <laughs>